As your WISE project grows, you'll need to start fine-tuning the relative mix between the various sounds you've implemented. For this, something that resembles a conventional audio console is often the desired interface. WISE provides this with something called the Mixing Desk. To demonstrate the Mixing Desk, we'll use a nearly complete WISE project for the Cube demo game. In the game, the player fires a shotgun, which is triggered with this Fire Shotgun Player event. There are several sounds that are played, and it would be nice to see them all in a single display when we go to mix them. While it's possible to do the work of mixing in the currently displayed designer layout, the mixing desk brings together all of the properties we might need to adjust into a single view. The mixing desk view can be brought up in an individual view, or we can find it in the mixer layout. In the main menu, choose Layouts, Mixer. The mixer layout opens, but the mixing desk is currently empty. This is because the mixing desk needs to be populated with the objects that you want to work with. And that collection of objects is stored in a custom preset called a mixing desk session. Since game projects can have an extremely large amount of audio assets, it's common to have many mixing desk sessions, each with related objects. For example, the shotgun event we just played triggers multiple sounds, so we'll create a mixing desk session for these objects. Click the selector menu button and choose new. And we'll call this new mixing session shotgun. The new mixing desk appears, but it's currently empty. Objects are added to the mixing desk by dragging them in from the project explorer. In this case, the shotgun sounds are all contained within the shotgun actor mixer. So we'll simply select them and drag them in to add them. We'll do the same thing for bus objects. We'll go up to the master mixer hierarchy, select the bus objects the shotgun sound passes through, and add them in the same way. Once the mixing desk is populated, we can customize it to our liking. For example, we can drag the mixer strips to rearrange them into a preferred order. Let's take the shotgun blast and move it to the far left. And we'll take the master audio bus and move it to the far right. And then we'll move the SFX bus just before the environmental bus. Now, we have yet to see the familiar volume faders for these objects because they're located at the bottom of the channel strips. We can resize the view, but even then we don't see the very bottom that shows the voice volume controls. We can scroll down. However, to minimize scrolling, we can get rid of the properties in the display that we don't need. Click the Mixing Desk's View Settings icon and we can deselect any of the properties that we're not using. In this case, let's deselect anything related to Auxiliary Sins 1, 2, or 3, as well as Effect 1, 2, and 3. We can even shorten the height of vertical faders as well as the meter height. We'll go ahead and set these values to 100. All right, now that looks a lot better. Now we're going to select the Fire Shotgun Player event again. And when we play it, we can verify both audibly and visually that the sound is making it through the master audio bus. If you click the Start Capture button and then play the sounds again, we now get an orange indicator called a Voice Playback Indicator. And it turns orange anytime a voice is active on an object. When finished, click the Stop Capture button. Multiple mixing desks can be created and quickly recalled so that we can focus on specific parts of our game's mix. It's common to want to view all of our bus objects on a single screen as they represent the last stages of our game's signal flow. We'll just go to the selector menu, choose new, and create a new mixing desk session called Buses. As before, we'll add the objects that we want. In this case, all of the audio bus objects drag them in, and rearrange them to our liking. Here is where we can use the mixing desk to learn more about our project. We can look at the is ducking row 
and see that the SFX bus is being used to duck the music bus. We can also learn that the environmental bus will react to a change in the player life state. To see how it will react, go to the editing states area and change the player life value to dead. At this point, we see that there are properties representing offset values being applied for this particular state. But if we play a sound, we don't hear any difference. This is because to simulate the state, we need to click the push states button to force the state to change. Now when we play the sound again, we can hear the effect, in this case, a volume change as well as a filter. And of course, we can immediately make a change if this is not to our liking. We'll relax the filter a bit and try it again. Okay, that's much better. To switch between mixing desk sessions, we just go back to the selector menu and then we can return to the shotgun mixing desk we had earlier.